Hello and welcome to our Mammoth Business Software video tutorial. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to record the details of an incoming lead through quotation to order and ultimately to invoice using Mammoth Business Software. The demonstration will also include a look at Mammoth Business Software's integration with Outlook, so expect to see a few emails being sent too. Let's get started then. The first thing I'm going to do is open Mammoth Business Software by double clicking on the icon located on my Windows desktop. A login screen opens into which I can enter my username and password. Your username and password will be different to the combination I am using now, so if you do not know your username and password, then please call Mammoth Support who will be able to assist you free of charge. The next screen displays a list of company databases to which I have been given access. I want to use the Office Furniture Limited database, so I select the appropriate line and click OK. I will briefly explain the look and feel of the application. By default, the screen opens in a status view which provides an overview of selected key performance indicators, or KPIs. This screen is fully configurable so each user can determine which information is most relevant to his or her position and bring this information onto the screen. Many of the items are hyperlinked, which means a single mouse click will bring the underlying data to the foreground. Turning our attention to the left hand side of the screen, we can see a number of areas of focus. As this demonstration is aiming to show a lead to ledger type process, we will be primarily using the customer service focus area. When I click on the customer service focus area, the screen updates to show a flowchart or process map showing the activities and processes that are used in a customer service role. Two customer service KPIs are also shown on the bottom half of the screen. Again, these KPIs are configurable to the user's preferences. In this demonstration we have a lead from a company which has not previously done business with Office Furniture Limited, so I need to create a new contact. To do this, I click on the contact icon in the center of the flowchart to open the contact management screen. The screen opens on the last contact that I have seen. Information about the contact's address, telephone, fax and email information is shown on the left hand side of the window. As Mammoth Business Software can be linked to a telephone exchange, I can click on the telephone icon to dial directly to the customer presently displayed. This click has caused my desk phone to start dialing the customer, so I'll cancel this straight away. To send an email, I can click on the email icon slightly below the telephone icon. An email is created addressed to the email address of a contact. I will demonstrate more of this later. Other information boxes, for example status, category, and user defined fields exist for you to key relevant information to the contact. Along the middle of the screen is a series of tabs that allow a rapid overview of the activity to date with this contact. At the top of the screen there is a toolbar that enables me to navigate between records already entered into the database. If I want to find an existing contact, I can click on the list icon within this toolbar to see a list of contacts. Typing the name into the field at the bottom of the screen selects the re most relevant record, for example, Quantro Furnishings. However, I want to create a new record so I click on the new icon at the far left of the toolbar. I'll quickly enter some details about the new prospects, such as the company name, the address, contact telephone number, and fax number, a general email address. I'll select it as my contacts, specify the status to be prospects, the line of business is furniture shop and the category is customer. And I can save that record before proceeding to enter the name of a person who I contact at Gemini Supplies. In this case it's Mike Evans and his email address can be entered here. I 
can then save the company contact record and close the screen. Now, during a telephone conversation with Mike at Gemini Supplies, he was interested in receiving a quotation for a number of our items. To create a new quotation, I click on the Quotation tab and select the new icon in the lower toolbar. I will quickly populate the quotation screen with the details of a requested quote. We can use the product list icon to bring up a list of products and services. We can also use the drop down boxes to filter by specific product groups or product types. I need to enter a chair, a chest of drawers, and a table. I can then close the product list window by clicking on the close button. I can now click on the printer icon to select a media which I wish to print to. It offers me a choice of templates, whether or not I wish for a simple quotation or a more advanced quotation. For this demonstration I'm going to use the simple quotation form and click next. Then ask me if I wish to print to a printer, to a fax, or in this case I want to print to an email. So I select email and click complete. A new email is created with a quotation attached in PDF format. I can add a subject line and insert my signature. Then click send. It asks if I wish to create a follow-up task. Follow-up task to this quotation to perhaps chase the quotation and find out if it is accepted. I don't wish to do that so I shall click no. I can then close the quotation screen. Now, Mama Business Software's full integration with Outlook means that if instructed to, the software will scan incoming and outgoing emails, reviewing each to see if the recipient or sender is found in the database. When I send the email to Gemini Supplies, the software will have created a new activity, an outgoing email activity, and copied the notes and any attachments into the activity. We can take a look at this activity by selecting the Activity tab in Contact Management. Here we see a summary of all previous activities for Gemini Supplies. The only one visible is my outgoing email. If I double click on the activity summary, an Edit Activities window opens, stating the time the activity was started, finished and who was responsible. If I click on the Notes tab, I can see the text which was present in the activity, in this case my signature. If I click on the Documents tab, I can see any attachments, in this case the quotation printout. If I double click on the attachment, it opens in Adobe Acrobat Viewer. The essential benefit of this email integration is that other employees in my company, if, if given the appropriate permissions, can see a documented record of my email correspondence with any customers and suppliers and they remain fully informed. Private emails or emails from or to addressees not found in the Mammoth database are not integrated. For the purposes of this demonstration, we are going to assume that the earlier quotation has already been accepted and can now be converted to an order. To do this, I reopen a quotation by selecting the Quotation tab and double-clicking on the line with the relevant quote. The quotation screen reopens and I can click on the Order button in the upper toolbar to start a simple wizard that converts the quote to an order. The first screen asks which quotation I wish to convert. I ensure that Active is selected. That means the quotation presently displayed and then click Next. I then click on Complete to finalize the conversion of a quotation to an order. I can now close the quotation window and return to the Contacts Management window. I can now select the Sales and Invoicing tab to see a summary of orders and invoices that are present for Gemini Supplies. On this tab there is presently only one item, the newly created order, with a status of unprocessed order. If I double click on the order summary, the order screen opens displaying the products accepted from the earlier quotation. From this screen I can add additional products or remove unwanted products. 
I can also print out various documents by clicking on the print icon in the upper toolbar. I could print a delivery note, a picking list or other supporting documentation by selecting the necessary item and clicking OK. Now my system is set to update stock levels when a picking list is printed. So I select the picking list entry and click OK. The system is also configured to automatically print picking lists to the warehouse printer. So, so I ensure that the send to is set to printer when I click OK. The screen asks me to confirm that the stock levels should be updated, also that the order should be flagged as picked and ready to be invoiced. This is the case, so I can click OK. The stock levels in the warehouse have now been reduced and the products have been recorded as dispatched. With the products now sent to the customer, it is appropriate to raise an invoice for these items. To do this, I click on the invoice button in the toolbar. A list of available report templates is shown. I want to use the invoice standard form template, so I ensure that this is selected. I also want to send the invoice by email, so I change the send to choice to email before clicking OK. I do not want to see a test printer screen, so I deactivate that also before clicking OK. The system confirms that I do indeed wish to invoice the order. I do, so I click yes. Again, an email is created with the invoice attached in PDF format. As before, I add my signature, a relevant subject, before clicking send. I can then close the sales and invoicing screen and when I return to contact management and click on the update button you'll see that I no longer have any orders remaining to be processed but instead an invoice is now shown. I have now demonstrated how to create a new contact, a new quotation and how to create an order based on the quotation. We have also seen how to deliver and invoice the order. So to conclude this demonstration I would like to explain some of the actions the software has performed in the background. If we select the Activities tab, we can see that outgoing emails are recorded as activities. And if we open either of the outgoing email activities, we can see the text entered onto the email by using the Notes field, and we can see any attachments by clicking on the Documents field. If we return to Contacts Management and select the Accounting tab, we can see which open or unpaid items remain on the Gemini Supplies account and we can also filter to see any items which are closed or paid. For Gemini Supplies there are no closed items as this is a new account. We can also close Contact Management and change to the Accounting area of focus to see outstanding debtors of whom Gemini Supplies are so this demonstration has shown how, with the right system, companies can manage their customer relationships, stock, email, sales and logistics systems through one database with absolutely no dual entry of data, providing the highest data accuracy and the lowest manual effort. I hope that you have found this demonstration useful and will end simply by saying thank you for your time.